Okay, folks, it's time to talk about underrated cards, and I just need you to know I'm still suffering the pain of this one, so we're going back, we're, we're, we're making three layers here of suffering. I think I was high on pizza. High on pizza. <laughs> Dang it. One star. Oh Crossless God, Shana. I, I, don't I, I don't know what, what I was thinking. I don't know what I was thinking. What happened here? Hey, buddy, watch this. Yeah, folks, it's one of my favorite videos of every expansion. When we find out just how wrong I was, these are the most underrated, the most surprising Saviors of Old Doom cards comparing pre expansion reviews from the community and myself to the actual played nature of these cards in live Hearthstone. So how much did they exceed our expectations? That said, we've got five cards to discuss, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So up first here we have Tip the Scales, which the community rated outside of the top 100, which is disastrously low. Nobody expected this card to be good, but in fact, uh, being played in the top 40 cards for Savers of Uldum, and as many of you will know, is actually uh, probably being underplayed right now because Murloc Paladin is actually a fantastic deck ranking near the top of the meta, uh, just not a super popular deck, but nonetheless a very powerful one. So we might even see this number climb. So tip the scales way better than anybody expected. Now, I gave this card three stars, and in fact... Oddly enough, I gave every video, uh, every card in this video three stars, which some of you will say, oh, Regis, you give everything three stars. Well, that's not true. Uh, but that still means I drastically underrated this card because this is an easy four-star card. And if this deck becomes even more popular, this could be a five-star meta-defining sort of card. So three means I got it a little wrong too. Maybe not quite as wrong as the community, but still came in uh, under rating this card. And I think that's because most of us just didn't identify the opportunity with prismatic lens to discount this card, get it out into the game super early and multiple times in some cases so that your opponent just can't handle all the reload. And then backup plans like Zephyrus and Chef Nomi even help support that game plan as well because I thought, oh, you'll run out of gas in a Murloc deck to anything that has a couple board clears, but it turns out actually you don't. So tip the scales Paladin, Murloc Paladin's honestly really good and uh, would not be possible without this card and of course Prismatic Lens. So uh, far exceeded both mine and community expectations. So now let's move on to Cartut Defender, ranked 71st by the community, but actually the fourth most played card in Saviors of Old Doom, which is crazy. I gave this one three stars again, like every card in this video, uh, which again, I underrated this, because right now this is kind of looking like a four and a half to five star card with that kind of play rate. Uh, and that's because it's very popular in Reno Mage. That's the number one deck that's driving it right now, which is one of the most popular decks in Saviors of Old Doom. Honestly, though, it's seeing play in a handful of other decks too. Anything that's trying to run a little bit more of a control package that doesn't rely on mechs like Control Warrior is finding a way to utilize this card successfully because it turns out this is kind of the sludge belcher of this set. It came in at six mana a little slower uh, than I thought would be good, but it turns out there's just so much defensive stickiness bundled in here and a lot of healing bundled in as well. Some reborn synergies out there as well occasionally. So it's more flexible than I dreamed and more... Uh, effective at slowing your opponents down than I expected as well, which means Cartot Defender, sure enough, uh, one of the better cards in Saviors of Doom. I don't think anybody expected this to be a top five card because it was ranked in the bottom half of all cards. Uh, that tells you that uh, this is definitely one that slipped under people's radar. So moving on here to Dino Tamer Brand, ranked only 82nd, even lower than Cartot Defender, but still in the top 12 here for cards played right now because Highlander Hunter, it turns out, is really strong. One of the best decks in the game and maybe poised to get even better with the upcoming nerfs. So Dino Tamer Brand, a seven mana King Crush, it turns out is really good. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know if Dino Tamer Brand is the reason Highlander Hunter is good or if maybe just Zephyrus is strong enough that it it's just going to get there regardless, but this sure doesn't hurt. And because of that, it's being played. It's better than other cards that might exist at the same mana slot. And it turns out it's a pretty powerful finisher in a deck that can still muster quite a bit of aggression. So Dino Tamer Brand is indeed way better than we dreamed. And I think all of the Reno style, uh, Singleton style cards were a little underrated. People were perhaps overreacting to Bomb Warrior and the ability for the bombs to break these kinds of plays. And also maybe just generally... 
Um, not recognizing how good Zephyrus was going to be. Now, to be fair, Zephyrus was ranked number one amongst the community and is, in fact, the number one card. So they got it exactly right. But I still think they might have actually underrated him a little because Zephyrus is really, really good. And I don't think people anticipated it quite to that level. So regardless, uh, Diamond Tamer Brand, Zephyrus package is so good. Looks like it's going to stay that way. So Brand... Uh, another card that exceeded my expectations by a ton. This is very nearly a five-star card once again. And uh, I just thought he was going to come in as a fringe, like tier three, uh, you know, one of, of course, in a singleton style deck, but not anything that was meta relevant or meta dominant. And in fact, Brand is those things. So now moving on to the number two spot, it's Temple Berserker. This one was ranked 107th, way down there in the like arena card unplayable territory, but in fact played 31st right now in uh, Savers of Old Doom. And I would argue should be even higher. This is predominantly a part of a reborn quest paladin decks, which are another very powerful way to play paladin. Not as good as Murloc Paladin right now, but still a solid tier two deck uh, that's really underpopulated in the meta based on its power level. All the decks around it are getting played way more than Temple Berserker, despite the fact uh, and Quest Paladin, despite the fact that that deck is really, really strong. So this one could easily be higher because it is such a key part of the Reborn Paladin deck, of course, as a cheap Reborn minion, helping them get that quest done quickly. But this is not only being played in Reborn Paladin, which is a great sign for this card. We've also seen this in things like Aggro Warrior, where the uh, essentially enraged style effect of this card has come in really handily as an aggressive, sticky two-mana minion as well so a couple different decks for this one so it's not just that reborn and reborn paladin exceeded people's expectations i think it's actually that temple berserker is a better two drop than any of us imagined and then finally here for our number one underrated card it's reno the relicologist this one sure got a lot of hate when it was first announced um looked a lot weaker than the old school reno bomb warrior was a big scare for people with these no duplicate style decks much like Dino Tamer Bran. And Reno just became a subject uh, that a lot of people said, oh, this card's unplayable, it's terrible, this deck's never going to work. And instead, Highlander Mage is amazing. And again, one of the most popular decks out there, uh, one of the most dominant decks out there as well. And Reno the Relic College, as it turns out, feels pretty good in that list too. It's not just because he's a no duplicate card that he makes the cut, it's a powerful play doing 10 damage to the board is really, really swingy in the mid game. So Reno is contributing to that game plan, not just being a part of it. Now I'll say the exact same thing as I said with uh, Dino Tamer brand, Zephyrus is a more important part of it, certainly, uh, but Reno sure helps. And that means, yeah, I didn't see this coming. I didn't think that he was going to suffer the same fate as the community in general. I didn't rank him in my 92nd best card, right? I had him somewhere in the middle of my field, not near the bottom of it. Uh, but nonetheless, I did not expect him to be a top 15 card in the set either. So um, I wasn't quite as harsh on the community as any of these cards, but nonetheless, still came up underrating all of them. I didn't think any of these were going to exceed um, that kind of meta break point where they become, you know, tier two or tier one driving forces. But in fact, they all did. And uh, it's pretty sweet to see Reno succeeding because this was one of the star cards of the, uh, you know, expansion and people thought, oh man, the League of Explorers are going to suck. But it turns out two of them actually did pretty well. And I'm glad to see that Blizzard understood the balance on these perhaps a little better than many community members did. So yeah, a huge different there, difference there between the played rate and the ranked rate for Reno, making him the most underrated card in Savers of Old Doom. And there you go, folks. Now, there were some other underrated cards, certainly, and uh, I did exclude some cards that were, like, ranked 135th and and played, like, 60th, although they had huge differences. I just didn't think that they, they were outside the top 40 of cards played. It didn't seem particularly relevant at this point. So, uh, in case you're curious about my methodology there, there's a little bit of subjectivity in interpreting these results, just to make sure that we're talking about cards that were actually meta-relevant, not purely a numbers game. That said, if you have any cards you think I missed here that are super underrated still, or maybe flying under the radar, you think they should be more prominent in the meta, of course, share those thoughts in the comments below. Always like to hear what you guys have to say. But until then, thank you so very much for watching, and until next time, game on.